Welcome to a short video overview of the Resuscitation Council's 2015 guidelines. My name is Dr Andy Lockie, consultant in emergency medicine and lead author of the Education and Implementation Guidelines. I'm going to focus on the main issues relating to education and implementation of guidelines that were analysed as part of the guideline development process. In summary, the main changes are as follows. For education. All school children should be taught how to perform CPR and should be made aware of how to use an AED. There is compelling evidence from around the world that this approach can lead to a significant improvement in survival rates. Ambulance services should have access to a national database of AEDs and their dispatchers should have specific training in how to provide clear and effective instructions to rescuers over the telephone. Work is ongoing to produce a national database, but we need the cooperation of everyone who owns an AED to participate in this. With regard to CPR and AED retraining, we suggest frequent low-dose training may be beneficial. In other words, some form of regular brief training may be more beneficial than intervals of a year or more. The outcomes for candidates attending an EALS course are the same as those attending a conventional two-day ALS course. We have published a study of over 27,000 candidates that shows that those who do e-learning and attend an accredited one-day face-to-face course do just as well as those who attend the traditional two-day ALS course. Both course formats are still available, but we anticipate that the e-ALS course will continue to become more popular. High-fidelity mannequins, whilst popular, are not essential for life support courses. Life support courses should incorporate training in non-technical skills into their curricula, for example leadership, team behaviour and communication. With regards to the implementation of guidelines, healthcare systems should evaluate their processes to ensure those with a cardiac arrest have the best outcomes. Registries like the National Cardiac Arrest Audit and the Out of Hospital Cardiac Arrest Registry will provide essential data to allow this to happen. Only by measuring performance can we understand what needs to be improved. Teams who manage patients in cardiac arrest should use data-driven, performance-focused debriefing. Social media and innovative technology have vital roles to play in improving outcomes from cardiac arrest. These range from simple delivery of information, like the iResus app, through to more interactive apps like Lifesaver, which has, as its name suggests, already led to several lives being saved. Other innovative technology exists, such as apps that alert first responders to a cardiac arrest victim. Finally, we will continue to use our website and social media to keep you informed of developments and to ask for your support for critical campaigns like the call to teach all school children CPR. The full Resuscitation Council 2015 guidelines can be found on the Resuscitation Council UK website along with video summaries of all other sections.